Okay, this next case is one in which I want to describe a patient who has a multitude of complications and problems, but still requires the repair of a um, broken down tooth that's unrestorable. So Sally came into the office and has a lot of apprehension of dentistry from uh, experiences in her earlier years having hit her two front teeth and having a root canal in one of the teeth. And 20 years later, this root canal has failed and has caused abscessing or infections in her gum and bone, causing the loss of a lot of bone up and around this tooth with the root canal, so much so that there isn't enough bone to place an implant. So one miracle at a time, what she realizes is that she wants to have an implant placed here and she needs to recapture the lost bone. So we provide an organized treatment sequence for her and we manage the case in a very specific way. So to describe the course of treatment and the steps that we took, very briefly I'd like to show you these slides that just demonstrate the steps that we took. In this slide here you see that we removed her old previously placed crowns of 20 years and re-prepped the teeth and created an environment for the teeth for eventually extraction of the bad root canal tooth. But instead of extracting the tooth, we put on two nice temporaries on the two teeth. And these temporaries are what we're going to use during the healing phase of the bone and implant surgery. The first step after the nice temporaries are made is to have the oral surgeon remove the temporaries now and atraumatically and very carefully with special instrumentation remove the bad root where the old root canal was. And with that root being removed and having special three-dimensional CAT scan uh, documentation, we can see where we're missing bone. And we can actually, with special types of membranes and bone graft material, rebuild that bone. And the reason why we had this provisional made or temporary made before the surgical site is so that we can immediately place the temporary into the surgical site and onto the adjacent tooth for support and have an immediate fixed restoration that's quite comfortable and natural looking for her while we allow the bone to graft and grow into the site and allow for eventual implant placement. So one miracle at a time, we put the bone in first and let it heal. We usually need several months of healing for the bone to mature and grow to your own bone to allow us to have a site for an implant placement. So after several months of healing, we come back and remove the provisional or temporary restoration that's been holding on one tooth and hanging uh, off that one tooth into the um, missing tooth site. And we very conservatively analyze this area for the um, placement of the implant. And we measure the site and we choose the right implant and place it into the area where the tooth was removed several months earlier. With, again, the same considerations of depth and width and position for optimal tissue health and us to be able to place an immediate temporary abutment. Uh, this temporary abutment is simply screwed on the implant and again houses a plastic coping that then the surgeon can transfer the patient to the restorative dentist and the restorative dentist simply can reline that previous provisional to fit on the implant and plastic cap. And so this patient has an immediate restored implant uh, the day of implant placement. And because of the ability to be uh, fully anesthetized, to be fully coordinated between the oral surgeon and the restorative dentist where there seems to be a seamless transition from one uh, stage of treatment to the next under very predictable controlled uh, types of restorative dentistry. There's no confusion, no questions, and the patient's fear and um, apprehension is greatly diminished because of the coordination of the predictability of the treatment. And here you can see the day of the implant placement and the provisional restoration placed on the implant uh, and the natural tooth and what healing occurs over several months time. What happens many times with patients get these two new front teeth and they realize how great they're going to look, they oftentimes want to perk up their smile and they'll do ancillary treatments such as bleaching their teeth, which you have time to do because these temporary restorations 
will sit on the implant in the natural tooth for two months before they're eventually transitioned into porcelain final restorations. So before the final crowns are made, many times people will bleach your teeth and lighten them. And then we go through a series of technical measurements and impressions to make uh, the laboratory uh, components for the crown and the implant. We receive them back from the laboratory, again, um, painlessly, now without anesthesia because there are no nerves. We're able to place the abutment or the post on the implant and then the crown on top of that and using the right combination of cements to cement both crowns, one on the natural tooth and one on the implant, to make them look identical and have the same gingival contours and the same aesthetic look so that you can see between the before and after shots that she gets a very pleasant result with the high smile line. She's not apprehensive about dentistry anymore. She's satisfied with her smile and she's looking actually better than when she originally came in. And she's now a patient who comes in for routine hygiene and routine filling and dental care without any fear and has complete confidence and restored and renewed health in her mouth. And this is the kind of opportunity that we have to provide patients what seems to be complicated high-tech dentistry and allow them to understand how simple and painless it can be. Thank you, Vince. I have another question I'd like to address is, how crucial is the temporary or the provisional restoration that you make, and how long do you like to typically wait before you place the final crown? The temporary restoration is the key to the success for the aesthetics of the um, restoration, because the restoration not only is about the temporary crown and the four final porcelain crown, but it also is about the gingival contour and the health of the gingiva. So when you're able to place the implant and immediately put a temporary restoration on the implant, you're immediately able to, to contour and guide the tissue during the healing process to look l the way that you want it to look like. And of course, we want it to look like the adjacent tooth gum tissue. So the contours of the temporary restoration we make are specifically identical to the adjacent teeth, and therefore the gum tissue will heal to exactly duplicate the adjacent teeth. And I, we like to let that set for at least two months for two reasons. One is to allow the, the implant and bone interface to grow with each other. And the second reason is to allow that gingival contour that the provisional restoration is forming to fully mature before we take our impressions for our final crowns. So that's why we wait typically two months before we proceed with making the final crowns. Thank you again for being our guest and sharing your experiences. Dr. Vince Prasipino, prosthodontist, joining us in Bethesda, Maryland. Losing a front tooth is a devastating experience for most people, altering the self-image, confidence, and social interactions. Dental implants offer a great solution for replacement. However, it must be performed carefully by clinicians who have in-depth knowledge and understanding of its challenges, biology, and strict protocols required for optimal success. Oral Surgery Current is recorded and produced by Dr. H. Ryan Kazemi at the Center for Oral and Facial Enhancement in Bethesda, Maryland. For more information, please check our website at www.facialart.com.